introduce yourself and uh, then we wait two more minutes. Okay, thanks. My, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Nick Visas. I've been working with uh, Rene as a proxy SQL committer over the last few months. Um, and I'm also a MySQL DBA. Um, before I kick off this presentation, just a question, a show of hands for me to, to gauge. Um, who's familiar with asynchronous replication? Semi-sync? Proxy SQL? Okay. GTID? Okay. Great. Um, so let's kick off with Proxy SQL. Since everyone's familiar with this, I won't focus on it too much. It's a layer 7 um, database proxy. Okay. Primary integration is with MySQL protocol. There is some support also for ClickHouse. And by the way, in, um, there's a birds of a feather fe session at quarter to five in room H3228 for those of you that are interested. For those that are not familiar with ClickHouse, it's blazing fast. You should check it out. Um, so moving back to Proxy SQL, um, it's built for high performance, high availability, and it's feature rich. So there's a wide variety of stuff that you can configure um, to get uh, various functionality, as well as to tune the proxy as uh, you'd like it to behave. So quick overview of the architecture, clients connect, um, the requests are evaluated, and depending on the configuration you've put into Proxy SQL, certain actions will be performed. So like key areas are read write split, sharding, query write. And for this session we'll be focusing on read write split and specifically the the challenges that we have with uh, master slave replication. So we're all familiar with replication. The biggest problem is replication lag and um, being able to retrieve data that is fresh enough from our slaves. So I mean, we have this problem in asynchronous replication. In semi-synchronous replication, we can be more sure that our data has reached our slaves, so the integrity is there, but we can still read stale data. Um, so in order to avoid reading stale data, especially when um, an application connects both to a master and a slave, it has to maintain two sets of connections, and it also has to be aware of how fresh the data is on a slave. So Looking at this in more detail, okay, typically an application will write uh, data to a master. That data may or may not have been replicated to the slave. The application will then have to connect to the slave and read that data if we're doing a read-write split. So stale data can be received. This makes our developers unhappy. With Proxy SQL, the read-write split, um, we overcome the problem of maintaining separate connections to masters and slaves because we have the concept of reader and writer host groups. So the application can just blindly send all requests, reads, writes to Proxy SQL. Proxy SQL will route the writes to the master and then route the reads to the um, slaves, depending on the configuration that we set up and the query rules. Um, so the big benefit is that we don't have to make application changes in order to route our read queries to a slave or to route um, our uh, writes to a master. Um, all traffic is sent to a single IP, to a single port, so you don't have to reconfigure it on, on failover. And we can dynamically modify the configuration we have in Proxy SQL to down slaves when we need to do maintenance, to add more slaves when we need to scale. So that one area is covered. But even with this configuration, stale data can be an issue because, I mean, Proxy SQL in itself does provide um, replication monitoring. So we can set a threshold, for instance, of 30 seconds and say if our data is more than 30 seconds old or even one second old, um, don't read from this slave. So we overcome that issue, but there's still a possibility that our data will be one second um, stale. And in addition to that, um, this monitoring happens from Proxy SQL, and it's basically polling the slaves at a configurable interval which has a minimum of one second. So up to two seconds of uh, delayed data. So we kind of have to think about how replication works 
and go into a bit of detail to see how we can overcome this problem. With asynchronous replication, as we all know, it's all, um, it operates basically with a bin log position, file and position. So all the events are written to the file, it's sent to the slaves, and all of these events are um, processed one by one. So um, both in terms of processing, it's kind of a little bit of a bottleneck, things have to happen in sequence, and masters and slaves have to be completely synchronized. In addition, um, when we're doing things like failover, we have to ensure that our slaves are at a certain position in order to connect to our masters. So GTID was introduced um, to, to help solve this problem. Of course, the main difference here is that we have a unique identifier for every transaction, which is not unique just to that host, but unique to every single host within the cluster. Um, so the specific area that I want us to keep in mind for today's session is the structure of the GTID. It's basically a colon separated identifier with the source ID and the transaction ID. So why is GTID important for us? Um, essentially, this gives us the ability um, to detect which transactions have, not be, have been executed and have not been executed. It allows auto-positioning, so we can just restructure our uh, master-slave topology as we wish. And um, starting from 5.6.5 and later in 5.6.9, um, variables were introduced so that we could actually delay our selects on a slave and wait for a certain GTID position to be reached before executing the statement. So this is quite good. It's a better approach. It allows us to get the data we want and avoid stale data, but there is still a delay because we have to wait until that, that data is replicated, and if it doesn't replicate up until a certain point, we'll get an error on the connection. So in MySQL 5.7, uh, a variable was introduced that's pretty important. Now, this is available in Pocono Server and Oracle's MySQL, but not in MariaDB as of yet. Um, so the variable is session track GTIDs, and basically when you enable this, you can get either the own GTID, so the GTID generated for a specific set of transactions, actually the last transaction that you executed, or the full set of GTIDs returned in the OK packet. So whenever I'm executing a write, I will know what GTID position um, a server will have to have processed in order for my transaction to be consistent. So having this information, I can query a slave and say, what's your GTID position? OK, you've already reached that point. I'm good to uh, execute my select statement. So I mean, we thought about how this can be leveraged in, in proxy SQL. And, Rene was like designing this and thinking about how can we do it. There's basically two approaches to, the, to solve this problem. The one is um, making a request to the slave and asking it, what's your GTID position? So, I mean, this implies polling, this implies uh, some delay. Essentially, it's the same problem that we have when we're um, monitoring for um, slave delay with a regular um, host group. So we're polling, we have that delay of the interval. It can work, but it's not the best approach. So what's the other option? Instead of pulling, pushing. Um, I want to ask if there is any question, because otherwise the next section would be very difficult to follow if something there wasn't clear so far. Is everything clear? Any, yes, any questions? I mean, um, it's very important that this, everything discussed up until this point is completely cleared for the next slide. So if anybody has questions, gray area. OK. Um, so um, the push method. Instead of polling slaves to get their GTID, why not have um, the MySQL server itself have a process running there and push the GTIDs that have been processed to all the, MyS to, to all the proxy SQL servers connected? In this way, we avoid having to request the data. We avoid having to wait. The slaves just process binary log events and then send their GTID positions. So I mean, it's more optimized, and it's especially important in a large-scale deployment where you have a lot of hosts, both MySQL servers and proxy SQL servers. So to solve this problem, Rene came up with a proxy SQL bin log reader. 
which is essentially a lightweight process that will run on a MySQL server. It's designed with Proxy SQL's principles of high availability, high performance. It's very lightweight. Um, there was a lot of work done to minimize the CPU usage and the network overhead. In fact, um, how does the process work? It processes bin logs as if it were a slave, but running locally on the same MySQL server. It strips all of the information except the GTID, and it even um, s strips the source ID and just sends the transaction ID until the source ID is changed. So there's very little network traffic, there's very little CPU overhead, and it also has an auto, auto restart mechanism in, in case it fails, and also reconnect in case proxy SQL is not able to contact it. So let's just have a look at this on a diagram. Yes. So when you say that it strips the, um, the source information, you mean the server, server UUID? Yes. And don't you have so a problem when... Uh, so it will send it, and then it will, it will not resend it until it changes. Ah, okay. Yeah. So basically what's happened is that um, uh, it takes the status of the, or the GDD executed on the, must, on the server, and as soon as a client, in this case it will be Proxy SQL, connect to this process, it will send the full GTAD set, and from that moment on, we'll send uh, the first uh, GTAD executed with all the server UID and the transaction ID, and then from that moment on, it will only send the transaction ID until the moment uh, the, a new uh, UID is generated. So it's just a way to minimize, to minimize network bandwidth as soon as possible, because it's designed to have hundreds of proxy connecting to every database server. So of course you should try to minimize network usage as much as possible. Okay. Um, so MySQL will send the, the replication data and all of the GTID and whatever needs to be written to the slaves. And um, the bin log reader will run locally, read all of these as Rene just described, and send them to all the proxy SQL instances. So every single proxy SQL instance that connects to a MySQL server will have, um, if it's been configured to collect that, will have um, the exact position for uh, every instance. So at this point, we know what position our slaves are at. But how do we achieve the consistency? So proxy SQL can be configured to enforce this consistency on specific host groups. Um, and if you've enabled this, what Proxy SQL will do is when a session is initiated and um, some transactions are occurring, um, my, uh, Proxy SQL will check the status of a host before routing a selector. And it will check to see if the GTID, the last GTID that was executed for that session on a group of servers has been executed on the slave before sending the query. Okay, so let's take a simple example of two, two slaves and one master. It will check the first in its own internal in-memory list. It will not find it. It will check the second. If it still does not find it, it will then route the query to the master. So you'll always have fresh data. Your latency will be low. Um, and you can even configure this just on a host group. You don't necessarily need the replication host group. So let's just have a look at this in, in terms of um, a replication host group. So the application will send the reads and writes to, to proxy SQL. DML will be routed to the writer host group. This will be written on the master. The next request will, the next DQL request will come in, some select or something like that then Proxy SQL will evaluate which slaves are up to date, and if none of them are, are up to date, it will route it to the master, provided that the master is included in the reader host group. So to sum up, let's have a look at what is supported um, for GTID consistent reads in Proxy SQL. Um, with basic uh, master-slave replication, we support both asynchronous replication and semi-synchronous replication. For multi-master, InnoDB cluster and group replication is also supported. Finally, a quick note about the requirements. 
Um, GTID is required for all of the servers that are part of the host group. Um, and of course, uh, MySQL 5.7, so that we can have that information returned in the OK packet. And finally, at the current moment, um, the binlet format must be configured to row. So, what time is it? Time for Rene to do a live demo and for all of you to see how this works in action. So, take it away. Thanks. Um, questions so far? Yes. Okay, so basically uh, the way it works is that the GTID of the transaction executed from the client is returned from the OK packet. So for every client session, Proxy SQL is tracking the GTID for that specific client. So when it needs to execute the, a select statement, it's check which slaves has that specific GTD. It does not check the last GTD you've written for, whenever, uh, for whatever connection, just for that specific client. Yes, technically, yes. Uh, actually, you might also send queries to a slave that is a few seconds lagging behind, but you ensure that the write that has been written by one specific client has reached the slave. Um, one important thing is that you don't have to enable these features for any sort of traffic, but you can specify which select statement you want these features to want enabled. It's not, you, you don't enable it globally. You enable it for per type of select statement. Technically not correct. It doesn't query them to check if they have the GID, but it internal, internally check if those slaves have already the data. Now, the principle of uh, check if, there are, if the slaves have the data first and then the master, because normally if you're using replication host group, uh, the master is in the same host group as the slaves uh, because it's part of the reader, but with a lower weight. So the probability of the query being sent to the slave is higher than the probability of sending, being sent to the master. What if the GDD is not executed on none of the slaves and neither on the master because actually technically it is possible that the bin log reader reply slightly later, even unlikely, but the possibility is there. Uh, the same principle apply of uh, how proxy SQL behave when there is no server in our host group. It just wait for the server to come, for a server to be available. So technically, you might have a slightly delay. The worst case. The, the, the error will come after 10 seconds. It is the default for a server not being available in the host group. Let me go back. Uh, um, let me see which is the best slide to. Uh, yeah, probably, probably this one. Let me just go this side. So, the way it works is that the application is writing here. So then the master reply with the OK. The proxy SQL knows what is the OK, the GDD on the OK packet. It reply to the client with OK. Then by the time that the client is sending another query, you can pretty much ensure that at least the master has sent the GDD to the proxy. So the probability of having this guy sending a query before this one returned the GDD to the master is unlikely to happen. Technically possible, but the probability is extremely low. Um, and then it depends how fast are the slave to process the GDD and reply back to the proxy. Uh, but the idea is that we are eliminating all the extra network round trip because when this will execute a query, a select statement, this already knows what are the GDD executed both here and there. It doesn't have to check them. It already knows. Yes? Yeah, every client has his own state. So the GTID. Yeah. 
if you have only one proxy, what you are saying is very easy to, 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 to do, to implement, because this proxy will know all the query that has been sent to the database server, master, slaves, whatever. But if you have multiple proxy, then this process does not know what has been executed by that one. Um, technically, it can be implemented in some other way, like relying only on uh, the bin log reader, so whatever bin log has been executed up to that moment, but a consequence of this might be that, uh, let's see, let me think. It probably has to wait some interval to, to make sure that nothing else was executed in between. I'm not really sure how how to implement this or even if what, what are the challenges. Yeah. Okay, so demo. Um, so we are trying, uh, oh, you cannot read here. I'm trying to zoom out. No, it's okay, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so there were two, two things that I wanted to show. One is uh, one proxy SQL instance that is collecting metrics from 30 database server at the same time. So it's collecting metrics for all of them. And I wanted to show the CPU utilization and the, the network utilization, but unfortunately the VPN doesn't seem to work, so I'm going to also only to show another one. Um, so in this session, what we have is, okay. So uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the way Proxy SQL is being configured. So it has an admin interface, uh, which basically <coughs> execute DML to configure the proxy, or the configuration all is, on, um, is on tables. So for example, the table, my SQL servers, in these tables, there are all the servers that are configured as a backend for Proxy SQL. And um, in our case, what we have introduced for these new features is these new variables, that is, these new columns, that is GTD port. So we have hostname port and the GTD port. GTD port is basically where the bin log reader is listening. So for example, we can run select uh, host group ID, hostname port, uh, GTD port from my SQL servers. I'm just removing everything else. So we have uh, two host group, host group one and host group two, where GDAD port is enabled, so it's not zero. So a proxy SQL will connect on that port and retrieve the GTAD. And all this is happening in real time. So there is a new tables, show tables from stat. So in stat, the stat schema is where all the metrics are being collected and specifically we are interested in this table. So select star from stats, uh, stat MySQL GTD executed. So here we have the proxy SQL is collecting GTD from those three server. That is, this one is the master and those two are the slave. And in real time is telling you the GTD executed set and how many GTD events has been read so far from that server. Uh, if you execute it a few times, you will see that, of course, those counters are changing. Perfect. And uh, you can also guess which one is the master and which one is the slave. OK. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, okay. So, um, show create table uh, stats my SQL. Um, connection pool. So, this table also collects 
this table collect all the statistics of all the queries that are being executed. Um, and it also, now there is a new uh, columns that is uh, queries and query DGTD sync. So select star, select queries, queries, uh, GTID sync from. So uh, here the host group, there are some servers that have you no know, these features enabled because this actually is a proxy SQL that is connected not to one uh, cluster, but there are multiple clusters behind it. So uh, it's, it only tells you where the queries has been executed. Um, so a lot of queries have been executed without uh, GDD enforced, while other query have been executed with GDD enforced. So it will read, uh, <coughs> it will, when it's reading, it's making sure that the server is in sync with the master. Time is over, okay. Um, is there any other question? Actually, the demo was going to, supposed to be a bit longer. Um, you, will, you will come back on stage in yes. two hours? Yeah. So, also, so you will be there. <laughs> you can finish the question at that time. But sure. <coughs> why I will set up a test. You can answer questions. Yeah. Do you have question while?